Jones. Um, and a couple things we need to know. The, quest the first question is, where do we put the center, the origin of these vector systems? Um, I'm putting them in a particular space and drawing vectors relative to them, but it turns out actually that that you might have a problem where you think, gee, you know, it's in the wrong place. How can I put the center exactly where I want? Well, it turns out it doesn't matter where you put the center. This is something called translational symmetry, and translational symmetry means that that it, for real physical laws, it's you can set this coordinate axis, the position of it, wherever you want. And all this means is that if we perform an experiment at one place and then we move to a different place, we should get the same results, which is pretty much common sense. For the same thing, you have rotational symmetry. It doesn't matter where you rotate the axis and point X or Y to. So you're welcome, and this is a, a trick to solving electromagnetic problems, um, you're allowed to put this axis system wherever you want and rotate it along whatever direction you want to make the problem easier. The results will be absolutely the same. So, so what we see in Coulomb's law here is that we have two vectors that are subtracted from one another. So let's understand um, what a subtraction of vectors means. And let's, let's take a really easy case. Let's just say we've got the y unit vector minus the x unit vector. And so one might think that the y unit vector, um, which is pointing here and has the value of 0 along x plus 1 along y, and the x unit vector here, and let's subtract that, has the value of 1 along x and 0 along y, um, that this y minus x is going to point from y to x. So let's, let's do our subtraction problem and see what we get. Essentially we get 0 minus 1, so minus 1 x plus 1 minus 0 y, 1 y, and if we plot that vector Rather than get a vector that goes down in this direction, we get one that goes negative one that way, one that way. So we get a vector that goes up that way. So, so this is a little strange. Essentially what it means is that if you have vector A and vector B, if you want to go from this point A to this point B, you do not write A minus B that's wrong. It turns out you write B minus A. So that's a little counterintuitive, but this is how we subtract vectors. Where you're coming from goes at the end, where you're going to goes at the beginning. A little counterintuitive, now you know it, it's easy to remember. Another thing we might want to know is how long is this vector C that goes from A to B. So let's write our equation here. C is equal to B minus A. It turns out that the length of C is something called the magnitude. And the magnitude of a vector, and let's write um, basically uh, C equals Cx, which is just some number for how long it is in the x direction, and we'll write our unit vector there, plus the, let's write this the correct way, that would make life a little bit easier, um, the y length of C along the y direction if we want to know how long it is, we call that the magnitude of the vector c, and we represent the magnitude by these two vertical lines here. That's just equal to the square root of cx, the amount along the x direction squared, plus cy along the y direction squared. And so this is the magnitude of a vector here. One of the things you need to remember, along with the fact that when you subtract vectors where you come from, is subtracted from where you're going to. And that's all we're going to say about vectors for the time being. And the reason we need to know that is that we're doing subtraction of vectors here. And you see this part down here in the bottom of Coulomb's law is a magnitude. So this is not a vector. Anything inside the magnitude sign is a number. It's simply the length of the vector. Okay, so we've done a pretty good job of explaining a lot of Coulomb's law so far, at least some of the math behind it. Let's move on and look at another part, which is Q, which is the amount of charge that gives rise to the electric field. This gets a little bit complicated. Um, what do we know about Coulomb's law so far, if we look at this? Well, we know that we have 
two vectors, um, Rm and Rq. And I've chosen those names myself, where Rq is the position of the charge, and Rm is the point we're measuring at. Um, and I'm going to, because of translational symmetry, set Rq equal to zero by putting the charge, Q, down here right at the origin. Then the length of Q becomes zero, and we can get rid of those two vectors, and then we can write Coulomb's law this way. It turns out that when we do this, we see that Coulomb's law generates a vector because the electric field is a vector, so we're going to be generating vectors. That vector points in the direction of where we're measuring to. So if we want to measure at some point m out here, um, essentially we have an electric field or uh, the electric field vector pointing out away from the charge. That's what this says right here. And we know that it scales by the length, the, the inversely to the cube of the length of this vector. And we'll look more at that scaling a little bit later. But the important thing to note is that the whole thing that generates this electric field is the charge. And Q is the amount of charge. If you have more charge, you double the charge, make QA twice as big, you get two times the electric field. If you make QA ten times as big, you're going to get ten times the electric field. The electric field scales with the amount of charge. But, but what is charge? Well, now we need to look at another part of Coulomb's law, which is this force term. And let's say we've got another charge, Q sub B, and it's sitting out here at this point, M. What's going on with this? It turns out that this Q sub B, this other little charge here, is going to feel a force. The force is a vector. It points in the direction of the electric field, which is away. And the size of that force is proportional to how big that second charge is times the size of the electric field, which in turn we know is just proportional to QA. So what does this mean? There's a lot of math that gets, this gets quite complicated, but in a really simple sense, what this means is charges put out force fields. Invisible force rays is the thing I like to call them. We call these invisible force rays generated by charges the electric field, and we give it the variable E, and we make it a vector because these forces push other charges in a particular direction. They only push on other charges. If something comes along here that doesn't have a charge, QB is equal to zero, the force is also equal to zero. So charges are things that only push on other charges. You may think, well, this seems kind of strange because my body's made of charges and I, I, I don't feel electric fields even though I've heard they surround me all the time. Well, it turns out that matter is composed of an equal number of positive and negative charges, so our bodies are continually being pushed and pulled the same amount by any electric fields they encounter, so the net force we feel is zero. So again, charges generate electric fields, these invisible force rays. So if you have a charge, it's putting these invisible force rays out in all directions. These invisible force rays only push on other charges. Other things don't feel them. It's very analogous to um, gravity, for example, where mass generates gravity, and gravity only affects things that have mass in a general sense. That, that's sort of doing a little bit of hand-waving, but that's the general idea. Uh, electric forces are much stronger than gravity, it turns out, if you do the calculations. Um, so charge is what generates electric fields. Electric fields are the invisible force rays that push on charges.